these on your tables also. It's a very nice model. It has the kidneys, so everything we've looked at so far, other than the urinary bladder, is uh, right here. Capsule, cortex, medulla, pelvis, the calyces, all that stuff's right here. Um, I took a wedge of this, like right here, took this wedge out and blew it up right here. So you can see the renal capsule on the outside, you can see the renal cortex. This is the renal pyramid, which is in the medulla. Here at the tip of the pyramid is the renal papilla. But you can see some structures inside now. And what you see inside of here are the nephrons. And the nephrons have two basic parts. One is going to be this capsule, it's called a glomerular capsule, which covers a little capillary ball called the glomerulus. And right over here, this is blown up. Here's the glomerular capsule, this little ball, there's a ball here, surrounding this capillary ball called the glomerulus. You see the glomerulus inside here, and you see one inside there. So this is a blow up of that. So you can see the capsule real well, you can see the glomerulus real well. Two parts, the renal corpuscle, means the renal body is made of two parts. This uh, glomerular capsule and the glomerulus. The glomerular capsule and the glomerulus, that's called the renal corpuscle. But it's also a renal tubule. You can see the tubule leaves this, this uh, capsule here, it leaves. And here it is right here, leaving. And it has some twisting here. When it leaves and it twists, that's called the proximal convoluted tubule. Then you have the descending limb of the nephron, the loop of the nephron, the ascending limb of the nephron. This is called the loop of Henle, what this is called right here. This ascending limb does some twisties here too. That's the distal convoluted tubule. So proximal means it's closer to the glomerulus, distal means it's further away. Convoluted means twisted, and they're both twisted, and they're both tubules. And we're going to join to this collecting duct here. You see that many nephrons are going to join in and deposit their urine into this collecting duct. And the urine will drop out the tip of the renal papilla, is captured by the calyx, channel to the renal pelvis, and then leaves by way of the ureter to the urinary bladder. <coughs> so you can see that real well. On here also you see that this glomerulus, this capillary bed on this model, this is a special model here. This capillary bed is covered with a specialized type of epithelium. But I have to back up just a second. This glomerular capsule is made of simple squamous epithelium. Simple squamous epithelium comes in and it covers the glomerulus. And it changes a little bit. The cells differentiate into the cells that are shown on this side of the glomerulus and they're not shown on this side. Do they cover both sides? Yes. But this model only has them on one side of the glomerulus, so you can see something about the capillary bed itself. So these cells here, are called, each one's called a podocyte. It means a foot cell. And for some reason, these podocytes have a gray nucleus. I don't know why. Usually they have a dark purple. Remember on the... Uh, on the uh, cardiovascular, on the, on the arteries, mainly they had red. Well, they have a silver one on this model. So that's the nucleus of each of these cells. POD, P -O -D <laughs> implies foot. So these are foot cells. And they have little extensions that form interlocking fingers. And those are called pedicels, means little feet. And we'll talk about the, how that works a little bit later. It's part of the filtration mechanism here, how you filter the uh, materials out of the urine. So we'll look at that. This side shows the uncovered capillary bed of the glomerulus. So the protocytes are not on this side. Are they in real life? Yes. On this model? No. So you can see the holes in the capillaries, the fenestra. That's why they didn't cover this side. So you can see the fenestra. Okay. Uh, this is the proximal convoluted tubule leaving. Here's the distal convoluted tubule up here. I'm going to put some slides up. Uh, showing you proximal convoluted, distal convoluted tubule, and glomerulus. You'll see this whole thing here with the ball and the capsule around it. We'll see that there's a difference between the proximal and distal convoluted cells. Look at this model. You can see how many cells are forming this tubule here, right? This 
probably going to take about five cells to form this tubule. That's the proximal. Look at this one. The distal's probably got about 15 cover, uh, composing it, more cells. That's what you'll see on the slide. We'll also notice that you can see microvilli on this, a whole lot of microvilli, but there's not going to be many on this one. That's why you have fewer cells, tons of microvilli, a lot of cells, fewer microvilli. Most of your absorption is going to occur right here in the proximal convoluted tubule. About 90% of what leaks out of this capillary bed, this glomerulus, into this capsular space, about 90% is immediately reabsorbed in that proximal convoluted tubule. The other 10% is qualified. Going to keep it or not? If it doesn't keep it, it comes urine. If it does keep it, it brings it back into the uh, circulatory system. Now we'll we'll talk about the circulatory system a little more too. Um, I just have blood flow on your chart there, um, and we will look at that. I'll let you do this just for the starts in here. We'll go over the blood flow later. So you're going to have to be responsible for these vessels, right? We'll talk about them. In fact, you can look at the two of them, and we'll talk about it later, but. On this model also, to make it less confusing, instead of having these capillaries covering these tubules, which is where they are, they put them over here so you can see them. 